Miami Hurricanes coaching staff, things have been really quiet up until now. Carousel, though, has just started turning. Who is going to be the next running backs coach at the University of Miami? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday. Wasn't easy, but we made it. I am Alex Dono. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So we finally uh, had a, a departure from the coaching staff. I, I figured there could be some tweaks coming because things had been too quiet in terms of coaches sticking around and nobody leaving, nobody being replaced. Um, this one surprised me a little bit. Tim Harris, who served one year as running backs coach. Very well liked among his players. Uh, Really good recruiter. Uh, I mean, he did really well getting Jordan Lyle and Chris Wheatley Humphrey in this class despite losing Kevin Riley. I mean, Miami lost Kevin Riley, but they had basically replaced him already with Jordan Lyle. So I thought Tim Harris was doing a fantastic job. But uh, one of the symptoms of doing a fantastic job is you're going to be sought after. And we know Coach Harris had the history with UCF. And he's going back to UCF. He's going with a promotion. I would assume that comes with a raise as well, which I totally understand. He's going to go back to work for Gus Malzahn, this time as an offensive coordinator. So the result of this, my friends, is Miami needs a new running backs coach. And I hope as we bring on very good friend of mine and very good friend of the show, we know him as a, a former Sebastian the Ibis. Rudy Tamarchio is with us. And Rudy... I hope this isn't one of those things where uh, Mario Cristobal takes like six months to find a replacement, because sometimes these coaching searches that Mario does, he's very thorough, but the fan base doesn't always appreciate how long these things take. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me back on. And I I agree with you. It's one of those things where you want to have these decisions done sooner rather than later, especially with another recruiting period coming through. And getting in ready for the next season, you want to have everybody on the same page. You don't want to have someone come in and all of a sudden they're just full, you know, full speed ahead with, you know, a couple of weeks left to go in the season. So it's good to have that. If you're going to wait that long, you might as well just like call up Don Solinger and be like, hey, man, how's the couch? Do you want to like come over here a couple afternoons? And like, you know, I got a really nice long towel for you. Put it over your shoulders. And, uh, you know, I, I got a hobby for you for the next six to eight months. It's funny you mentioned that because um, we are going to be bringing Don Solinger on the show again very soon. So I might I might just ask him like I might say, like, Don, just tell me if you want this job and I'm going to forward this tape over to Mario and see <laughs> and see if he's interested. And obviously, the two of them know each other very well. They have a relationship. Now, um, we're going to talk about some possible candidates. And I, I try to limit my list to those who are like semi realistic and also those who have history in coaching and in running backs coaching because one of the things I noticed has been happening Rudy since this job came open you know I've I've made posts about it on our social media accounts at Locked on Canes and a lot of Canes fans just start listing really good former Miami running backs like I see people throw in the name Edger and James a lot I see people throw in the name Willis McGahey I, I, I don't know if these guys have the actual resumes that would make them realistic candidates but do do you think it could end up being a surprising hire like that because usually the way this goes with Mario if anything a guy like that would have to start as an analyst because like hell even Jason Taylor who had been a high school defensive coordinator he started on Miami staff as an analyst before he got an on-field job so no I don't think Edrin James is going to be announced as the new running backs coach tomorrow yeah this happens every single time there's a coaching vacancy even like a head coaching vacancy remember when Remember when that, like, I think it was after Al Golden's time, everyone's like, let's bring in Ken Dorsey, let's bring in Andre Johnson, let's bring right. in Ed Reed. Like, Ed Reed obviously was a great hire for chief of staff for that period of time. But, like, there's just something about, oh, let's just get all the 0-1 Canes back and just put them in coaching roles. It'll work out just fine. And, you know, look, I, I love seeing coach- players, great players become great coaches. Antonio Pierce being a great example of the NFL. Yeah. but. 
there's more ways that that goes wrong than when it actually works, which is sad to say, or just, you know, let it take some time, but you can't just immediately ascend to a coaching role, specifically a, a, a position coach. I just see the chat lighting up too. Like, Hey, McGee, yeah. Frank Gore, like, yo, Frank Gore's boxing. Frank Gore's doing his thing. And like, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Edrin James is an entrepreneur now. He has yeah, like he excellent restaurants. He's doing all sorts of cool stuff. You know, Javaris is a great like coach, youth coach, trainer back in Naples. Now he's like, he's become a really great story over in Southwest Florida. So like people are making their, you know, they're living their lives. They're doing their thing. But sometimes coming back home isn't always the right option. You want to get a guy who's an established coach. Right. Yeah. And okay. So I've got a list of, uh, of established coaches, you know, some of these, uh, we, we compiled ourselves. You helped me with one of the names on this list, Rudy. Uh, you know, I, I did go through, uh, 24 seven sports with Gabby or Rudy. I was writing about possible candidates. Uh, I, I think these are all at least semi-realistic, some more realistic than others. Now, the first name that I'm going to mention is folks do not rule out a promotion from within. Because uh, the executive director on Miami staff, you, you've seen that this is the most powerful man on Twitter because he gives you the bat signals 30 minutes before somebody commits. Dennis Smith, D-Train on Twitter, who is the uh, the executive director of football at Miami, he does have running backs coaching experience. He actually worked for Lance Guidry at McNeese State. Uh, and, you know, again, I, I know like sometimes the in-house promotions are not exciting to fans, and I totally get it. Uh, at the same time, there are advantages. Like, I, I don't know. I can't really speak uh, for Dennis Smith's prowess as an on-the-field coach. He does have that on his resume, though, Rudy. But I can speak for Dennis Smith as a recruiter. He's a hell of a recruiter, and he does a good job even though he's not able to go out on the trail because he's not an assistant coach. So if you take someone who's already a really good recruiter and does have experience coaching that position, and now you actually put him on the staff and he's able to go out on the trail – uh, I, th th this could be an intriguing op option because, again, this is someone who's on Miami staff right now who's probably at least going to get an interview for this job. Yeah, as he should. I mean, how, what is there a better nickname for a running backs coach than D Train? Let's just be yeah. honest. Like, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna be a position coach and your name is D Train, yeah. you better be a running backs coach. I don't want like the D Train to be like a you know like a safeties coach, something like that. I mean, maybe you do because. Yeah. Sean, Sean Taylor was kind of a train back in his day, but yes, he was, yeah. but that's a great name for it. And, you know, internal hires. Yes. They may not be the, the sexiest choice for some people, but it's all about the staff cohesion and about what, like what level of respect you have for your own players and recruiting obviously is very important. I mean, you could be a great running backs coach, but you need to have the talent to coach up. You don't always have to start from the ground up. You're not teaching people at this level, how to take a handoff. You're showing them right. like ways of, specific ways of how to block certain formations, maybe from high school, they didn't run a certain offense and you're coming in. So they're trying to teach them some of those pieces. Yeah. Mr. Valentine, uncle Rico sounds like a great one for a quarterback. So you can throw that all over the mountains, but uh, oh, man. we don't have any mountains here, but you can throw that fall over them. Skyscrapers, throw it, throw it over the palm trees, throw it over the skyscrapers. So, uh, you know, one, one of the names uh, that you you actually brought this one up to me uh, is uh, Tommy Robinson, who is former running backs coach at Miami, uh, 2007 to 2009 under Randy Shannon. He's more recently been at LSU, most recently at Texas A&M. I haven't really heard his name come up, but it doesn't seem like he's currently working anywhere, at least not that I could tell. Last I saw, I thought he was on the LSU staff. I thought he was our current running oh, back. Oh, was he back there? Okay, I, I think sure. so. That's part of why I thought this would be a great move for him to come back here. Because if you look at that running back room when he was there with Coach Shannon, it was Greg Cooper, you had uh, yeah. Mike James, and he also had a freshman that he helped recruit named Lamar Miller, who ended up having one hell of a career at Miami and also in the NFL for a few years. Now, when he left, he went to the NFL. Randy Shannon got, you know, was let go the year later in 2010. But you're talking about a guy who was a running backs coach at LSU and LSU's leading, leading rusher last year was Jaden Daniels, the Heisman winning quarterback. Not a great look for a running backs coach. I'm sure that's not the coach is doing for the position. That's more of how the pieces came together, how the offense worked and just about what kind of an athlete Jaden Daniels was. But if you're looking for a place to go and make a name for yourself again, why not Miami? So I want to talk when we come back about a couple of the bigger names that have been thrown out there and why, I'm not sure how realistic these are, but nothing's impossible. And and you know another thing to think about that I hadn't brought up, Rudy, is that 
Miami should have an attractive running back room for a running back coach to come in and work with. I, I know Mark Fletcher is recovering from an injury, but we saw what he could do last year. Henry Parrish has been really solid. A.J. Allen had some great moments. We still have the great unknown of Trevante Citizen, what he could turn out to be in the near future. Uh, you know, Jordan Lyle coming in, who I mentioned uh, prior, and Chris Wheatley Humphrey, Chris Johnson, who's fast as lightning so it's you know I, I think any possible running back coach if you're looking at an outside candidate you know you're getting a really talented room at Miami so folks we're only getting started on this new episode of Locked on Canes we are live right now so if you're watching us live on YouTube at 10 13 a.m here on Friday smash that like button make sure you subscribe to our channel if you're listening to the audio version make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Odyssey wherever you get your pods and keep it locked right here. Going to talk about more possible candidates for the running back coach job at Miami right here on uh, on a new episode of Locked on Canes. I want to talk first about the amazing deals that are happening at game time. My goodness. Guys, game time is delivering last-minute ticket buying experience. It should never be stressful. It's never stressful at game time. You're getting the best last-minute deals. Folks, I'm looking at... WWE SmackDown tonight at the Kaseya Center, $34 tickets available at game time. I, every, when I, whenever I see these wrestling events, I never usually see tickets that cheap, especially uh, in downtown Miami. $34, you can get last-minute tickets to SmackDown tonight. You got Phoenix Suns at the Miami Heat on Monday night in that same building. $32 tickets are available. Guys, I'm telling you, you need to check out the deals at game time. You get views from every seat in the venue. You get all-in prices, so they're not slapping you with those last-minute fees at checkout. Uh, lowest price guarantee at game time. That game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Right now, all game time users get $100 off a big game ticket with the code Vegas100. How about that? You want to go to that big game in Las Vegas? Vegas100 is going to get you 100 bucks off. Terms apply. Just download the game time app and use code Vegas100 for $100 off a big game ticket. Or if you're not going to the game, use our code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed thank you so much for making this friday episode of locked on canes your first listen and your first watch today we're free wherever you get your podcast we're free on youtube and make sure if you're on youtube check out locked on sports today this network has launched the first ever 24 7 streaming sports youtube channel local experts national experts 24 7 at locked on sports today check it out on youtube rudy tamarchio is with us uh we're talking miami hurricanes running back coach search uh so rudy a another a name that comes up a lot among miami fans he's been absolutely crushing it at penn state since 2018 as their running backs coach was at florida prior he's he's from florida knows the area that's uh juan cider now the thing about coach cider is if miami were to were to get him down here uh home run higher. Like I, I don't I don't think you could do any better, honestly, with what he's done at Penn State, developing talent, what he did at Florida. The thing about Cider is he's been doing that job, running backs coach, at such a high level for such a long time. I don't know why he would make a lateral move. Like unless you like literally doubled his salary or something. Like I, I feel like this guy is in line within the next couple of years to be an OC or even a head coach somewhere. So I don't I don't know how realistic this one is. What about you? We've talked about how the game has changed over the years. And one thing that also changes is that position coaches don't stay position coaches forever. There's few guys that will like to stay in one spot or do one position for their entire career and not try to move vertically. So I agree with you. I don't think it's very likely unless you're going to bring him here. Hope it's maybe a one year deal, make a great run, hopefully for like the college football playoff and then say, Hey, congratulations. You're going to be go uh, be an offensive coordinator somewhere or, you get promoted to like associate head coach. I just don't see that with the current connections that Coach Crispell has to his staff, that he would bring in an outsider like that and do it. And also it, lifestyle choices. Some of these guys like to be where they are because they've set up their families. They put some roots down and say, look, if I'm in line here, I'm going to stay at Penn State, just like how you know the new coach at Michigan has been there. That's It's it's his area. It's his ship to run now. So there's nothing wrong with with staying where you are. 
Yeah, I like that. Uh, another name that's coming up, and I don't know, man, I feel like this may be semi-realistic, is Cadillac Williams. Who? Because the thing is, a lot of people who were tweeting me about him didn't realize that he's he's not still at Auburn. Like a lot of people thought, well, what about that buyout? And he's an Auburn alum. He has already left Auburn. Like he already resigned from from uh, Hugh Freeze's staff, and he said he's seeking other opportunities. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the circumstances were as to why he decided to leave his alma mater because he's obviously an Auburn legend and uh, you know had a nice NFL career as well. Was a high draft pick as we all remember by Tampa Bay. Um, but you know, he's obviously looking for other jobs. I don't know if maybe he's looking for NFL type of opportunities, but Cadillac Williams is available and he's got a good history coaching running backs. And I wonder if there's an NFL connection there with Jason Taylor. So if, if the circumstances were just, Hey, I, I don't want to be on this staff anymore. Maybe he's seeing some handwriting on the wall with coach freeze to say, yeah. Hey, I want to go take, take my talents elsewhere. There, there may be something, there may be something there, but I I honestly, when you sent me that name, I was a little surprised. I went, huh, I wonder how that could work out. But yeah. to be honest, I mean, it was it was really sad to see uh, Coach Harris leave. I mean, he's a UM Sports Hall of Famer. And I remember being in school with him. Like, yeah. oh, this is the cross-country guy. Like, yeah. his dad's a football coach. And obviously, like, him and Brandon, his brother, who also played at Miami, you know, they brought Booker T back from nothing. That was a school that had reopened. It was Booker T was a high school in Miami during the days of segregation. And then... It reopened, I think, in like the mid 2000s, early 2000s. It was closed for a long time. It was actually brought down to like a middle school level and then reopened as high school again. So it, it's because of that family that Booker T is the, the powerhouse that it is. By the way, guys, let us know in the comments to this episode who you would like to see as the next running backs coach at the University of Miami. Uh, I want to bring up uh, another name here, a couple more names. Uh, Patrick Cobbs, who's a former Miami Dolphin player, had some nice years with the Dolphins. Uh, he is the running backs coach at North Texas, which happens to be his alma mater. So obviously, I'm sure lifestyle wise, he's happy at his alma mater. Obviously, Miami, you know, would be if you climb up that coaching ladder, I, I would like to think Miami would be an upgrade over North Texas if this is a guy that Miami would like to to try and interview. Right. And also, he's already lived in the area down here in South Florida. So he is familiar and he seems to be doing a nice job there. So that's someone else I would think about. Uh, we could think about him, Rudy, and also. Uh, you know, I mentioned Dennis Smith as an internal candidate. There's another internal candidate who's an offensive analyst at Miami, and that's Mike Cassano. Mike Cassano was uh, running backs coach at Miami for one year, Randy Shannon's final year. So he has already done that job here. Yeah, that's and that's an interesting connection, too, because with Tommy Robinson, he was a running backs coach right before Cassano. Mm. And I think Cassano also has history with Mark Whipple, I believe, too. Didn't he like work with him yes. at UMass and everything? Yeah, he did. yeah. That's something really cool from the sense of just being, you know, being well versed in different offensive philosophies and systems. Because remember, Whipple was kind of the first guy to say, we don't know what look we're going to give you. We can give you a big package. We can give you a spread package. We can give you an eye formation. We can give you, you know, three wide. We can give you three tight ends. He was a guy that was really versatile. So to have someone with that kind of knowledge is great to bring and pass on to your players, too. Obviously, he's on staff now. But to bring that to a specific position group where blocking is very important, especially in Mario Cristobal's. Uh, philosophy it's a good choice to have now people keep asking uh it, what's the timetable um you know with Mario Cristobal it could be it could be a day and a half it could be three and a half months like do, do you think this is going to get done well let, let's set this deadline Rudy March 4th is when they begin spring football practices do you think Miami's going to have a new running backs coach by March 4th uh let me go out on a limb I'm going to say that we have a running backs coach before the next signing day let's go yeah, I, it's uh, hopefully it's better than my lotto record in terms of finding the six numbers. But that's my that's my uh, that's my bet. The other bet that I have is from your game time promotion earlier. If SmackDown is in Miami tonight, what are the chances, given the news of this past week, to see Dewey the Destroyer make his way out there? <laughs> so what, Rudy, I, I know a lot of you watching this or listening to this probably heard our episode uh, our, our episode earlier this week with Booker Pickett Sr. And uh, he gave us another nickname for The Rock that I had never heard. Like, I knew they called him Dewey at Miami uh, before he was The Rock. I didn't know they called him Dewey the Destroyer. So, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe Dewey the Destroyer is going to be out there today. Uh, another quick note, guys. Uh, we had talked a lot the last couple weeks about Miami possibly pursuing uh, additional wide receivers in the transfer portal. 
Um, so Leland Smith, the Juco wide receiver who I like, six foot five, two oh five, fastest lightning. He's not visiting this weekend, actually. Um, so apparently there were talks about him coming this weekend. I guess it's a good and a bad thing because if he was visiting this weekend, he's having to share that spotlight with 70 or more high school prospects who are down here for junior day and the battle seven on seven and five on five. So the staff couldn't devote a lot of attention to him. However, if he is planning to sign with a school on February 7th at the next national signing day, I don't know if he's going to be able to get down to Miami before that. So I don't know if this means Miami is just kind of taking a pass here, or maybe he's taking a pass on us. I didn't realize it. I could definitely see the, the April transfer portal window as being a possibility for Miami to take another look because somebody pointed out to me, Rudy, it's not like you're just going to be getting sloppy seconds in April. Cause uh, I had forgotten this. I mean, Keon Coleman who ended up at Florida state, I don't think he hit or, or they added him in April. If I, I don't think he hit the portal officially till April last year. So uh, how badly, like, do you think Miami needs to make another move at wide receiver or is there enough within? I feel like we need another receiver. I think it's something <laughs> See, Mr. Valentine, thank you for the shout out. Um, yeah, I I do think we need another receiver. I think it's a position that we don't have enough uh, proven talent on the field as of yet. Isaiah Horton's a great starter that we hope to have by week, you know, week zero with the Gators for your prediction earlier this week. You know, great speed, size, but there's a lot of inconsistency outside of Xavier Restrepo for for all intents and purposes. I mean, I really liked what Jacoby George did against Texas A&M, but you know, if he's not on his game and let's say he's letting the other team get in his head, he can he's known to commit a lot of penalties. So it's something that you want to see improvement. Yes. But just given what the prior resume is, I think we need more talent that's out there. that's more established. We have a great freshman class coming in. We have some nice young and experienced receivers. But, you know, there's something to have depth at the offensive positions, too. That's not just offensive line to have receivers that you can move in while the DBs are getting tired over the course of the game is important and to run different offensive packages. So I don't think you can, you could say you're a hundred percent set there. And I'm sure the staff believes uh, they feel the same way. So to get guys with size is important. I agree with you, especially given uh, they, they've got a lot of young unproven talent. I think to bring in somebody else who's maybe a fourth or a fifth year guy to stabilize the room a little bit, proven, uh, proven track record and proven leadership, I think is important. Um, I do want to get Rudy's take because we haven't had him on the show since Miami added a certain quarterback, right? The Cam Ward era. I want Rudy to weigh in on that, on the expectations, on the schedule. My friends, you know what you want to do. We're not done yet. You want to keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Guys, I know you're keeping it locked to FanDuel. Uh, we only have a few more games left in the NFL season, but they're big ones. They are big ones coming up with the conference championship games. That certain big game at the end of the season is coming up. and guys. It's not too late to get in on the action at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You can also get so much college basketball action, NBA, NHL. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay on the Parlay Hub. That's the best way to find popular parlays. I love the player props, and guys, with the Super Bowl coming up, you know we're all over the national anthem over-under. We're all, we're all over the coin toss. We're all over which celebrities are going to make cameos. Like My bet slip is usually like 50 deep <laughs> when that game is going on. It's crazy. So you want to check all of this out at FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Happy Friday, and thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We are free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube for the everydayers. If you'd like to take your everyday or experience to the next level, join our exclusive SMS texting chat through subtext. It's called Locked on Canes Insiders. Click the link in the show description below to become a Locked on Canes Insider. Breaking news, recruiting scoops, one-on-one -on -one questions and answers. Uh, you can try it free with the link below. Uh, for 14 days. And then if you like it, you can opt in after two weeks for $4.99 a month. We try to give you a lot of added value on there. All right, Rudy, uh, Cam Ward is now a Miami Hurricane. And, you know, we look at we look at the schedule. I could pull up the graphic here for those watching on YouTube. Look at the uh, 
hold on. I'm very, very bad with this technical stuff. Uh, we look at the the schedule. Dun dun dun. Coming up for the Miami Hurricanes, as you can see, Miami. Uh, I think as far as the ACC goes, this is this is a pretty easy, manageable schedule. You open at Florida, then you've got Florida A and M, Ball State, South Florida, Virginia Tech, Cal, Louisville, Florida State. That's a that two game stretch is going to be tough. And Duke, Manny Diaz showdown. Then Georgia Tech revenge game. Then Wake Forest, and then Syracuse. Uh, Cam Ward is a Miami Hurricane. What's your expectation for this offense and this team? I mean, how can you not be excited by that? It's something just just watching the whole saga of bringing him to campus. Uh, I'm not really going to say anything new, so I'm sure everyone that's been watching for the past couple of weeks to say once we finally get Cam Ward and it was official and it just kind of came out of nowhere for some of us. Uh, I got to say, you got to feel good. I mean, you want to have a quarterback that fits an offensive system. You want a quarterback that, look, yeah, he had his moments of, of uh, he had some issues over at Washington State in terms of some turnovers and some fumbles, but he also had the best offensive line. And any quarterback looks great when you have a high-performing offensive line. Miami looks like it's going to stay with a very good offensive line with some of the transfer portal additions they made and just with, you know, who they've recruited, who they've retained. So you got to be excited about that, especially because there are times last year that you can look and say, well, what if we had a more mobile quarterback? What if we had a time to, if he needs to escape pressure? I mean, yeah, the offensive line was great, but, you know, there were times where Tyler Van Dyke came under duress and he either threw the ball into an interception or he, you know, took the sack and fumbled or something happened. So to have somebody that could buy you some time, it helps your receiving core out because then guys get open because if you have to defend someone for five, six seconds because Cam Ward's buying time for you, it makes you look a hell of a lot better too. I just think it opens up the offensive play calling for Shannon Dawson a little bit. So I'm, I'm excited. I mean, when you look at the schedule, it, this is the same thing you could say about any, you know, fairly good looking Miami team in the past 20 years. Are we going to be the Miami team of the past 20 years that drops a couple games that we shouldn't like, do we lose at Cal because we're going out out West and it's going to be probably a noon kickoff out there. It'll be, you know, a little cool for Northern California. Do you lose to Florida State for like the fourth straight time and drive us all crazy at home? Do you lose on my birthday against Georgia Tech like you did in 2017 and I have to drive <laughs> back from the Keys just angry as hell because Mark Pope couldn't catch a ball? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those where if you look at it from the glass, you know, we, you and I are both very glass half full kind of guys. You could make a run with the schedule. It's good to see Virginia Tech back on. Uh, it's good to see... <laughs> Wake Forest on the schedule. I wonder what Duke's going to look like with Manny Diaz in year one because a lot of those pieces are gone and Mike Elko is obviously gone. I forgot about that until a couple of yep. weeks, like until like the schedule came out when, oh yeah, he's not there anymore. Uh, you could say Miami runs the table. You could say Miami drops three games that they shouldn't or four games that they shouldn't. I think it's, I think it's all about, instead of it being Cam Ward specifically, I think it's about the health of the team. Because yep. we've been hit by the injury bug in a number of different positions over the years. It's been the running back room lately uh, with the new running backs coach coming in. Obviously, you're happy about having the, the depth of talent there, but they have to stay healthy. I think Miami could have won a couple more games if they had the full availability of everybody in that room from last year. So, yeah, it, it, it could go either way. I'm going to stay optimistic and say we can go. We can have a really good year. Let's go. Uh, by the way, a couple people in the chat were asking because we didn't really we didn't really cover it yesterday, only because there was so much else to talk about. But uh, on Nate Kalepo, the he 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 committed to Ole Miss, guys. Unfortunately, Miami missed out on the uh, the starting Washington left guard. Uh, he had, and by the way, Lane Kiffin, they call him the Portal King for a reason. He'd been cleaning up in the transfer portal, so I, I would have loved to have had Kalepo, Rudy. But at the same time. Miami has more than enough on the offensive line, like more than enough to have a really good O-line this year. And I think it's important, the fact that Alex Mirabal loves to cross-train everybody. So it's like you don't have like, oh, this is our designated left guard or backup left guard. Like everybody on that line cross-trains at multiple different spots. So if you essentially take your best five, like I think we all know who the best four are. That's probably Jalen Rivers starting at left tackle again, although he can play left guard if needed. Uh, Zach Carpenter, the transfer center, uh, I believe is the best option at that position. Uh, and as Cooper, the best option at right guard, CC Maui Noah, the best option at right tackle. So it's just a matter of plugging in the next best guy 
at that right guard spot. And hopefully you do it quickly enough that you build chemistry because that offensive line last year, they started all 12 regular season games together. They had great chemistry. So if that's Matthew McCoy, if it's Tommy Kinsler, if uh, Samson Okunlola gets healthy, if that's him, like I, I think you've got options there that Miami can still be one of the better offensive lines in the country, even without adding Kalepo. Yeah, and I think if you if you speak to some of the best offensive linemen in Miami history, it's more about the chemistry than it is about the individual talent of every single member of that line. Because if you look at yep. what we all consider to be the greatest offensive line of all time in that 2001 squad, I mean, you know, there's guys that didn't make the NFL, like Sherko Haji Razuli, that was on that line for most of the year, you know, rotating in and out. And he was a, a member of the most dominant line in history. They didn't, you know, Ken Dorsey was sacked two times that whole season. I mean, obviously, you had all-stars like Bryant McKinney on one side. Brett Romberg made it to the NFL. Joaquin Gonzalez made it to the NFL. Uh, Martin Bibla made the NFL as well. He had four yeah. offensive linemen from the NFL. But it, it's all about the chemistry. And the more that they get times, repetitions together, the more it works. Same thing when it comes to the play calling. Because the, the play is going to go in a different direction. You're going to block in a different way. It doesn't have to be every single guy being a five-star or even a four-star to make it work. I love it. Well, great stuff is always here by Rudy, and I want to remind people he's uh, not only a, a very good friend of mine, but he's also a former Sebastian the Ibis. So this this man put the work in for how many years? Was it just the four years, or did you do any extra time in the suit? Uh, just, just an extra semester. I, mean, I ah. double majored at Miami, so I was like, look, I'm not leaving with a 2007 season in the last game in the Orange Bowl. No, 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 no. We got to get one more. So I was, you know, I, I had a couple credits to go for my for my history major. I already got my broadcast journalism one done. And yeah, it was it was a great time. I mean, it was I would do it all over again because it was so much fun. And knowing some of the current guys and staying in touch with everybody, you know, we're kind of a fraternity of ourselves. We're a, we're a feathered fraternity. And uh, <laughs> there's always there's always something to learn. And they'll ask a bunch of questions, too. Like, so what did you guys do? It's like, well, we didn't have a, a video board that had us on camera. So literally. The crowd was just looking for us at all times. Like if there was a touchdown, they knew it. like, oh, Sebastian's going out to the 50 or he's going to be on the yep. field. Now they're like, well, we have to be on camera. Like, no, no, no. just go out there. They'll look for you. They know oh, the man. fans are the same guys. Yep. Well, make sure you guys check him out on X at Rudy Tamarkio. Check out our show at Locked on Canes. If you follow us on X, we will follow you back at Locked on Canes. And hope everyone has a happy Friday. I hope Miami finds the best possible replacement for Tim Harris Jr. Uh, Miami's running backs coach has left to become the offensive coordinator at UCF. And we will talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.